three times until today, uh, been a symbol of the human spirit to endure uh, suffering for a greater good, for a cause, in ancient Greece to proclaim a victory. And today, my beloved, in the Orthodox Church and throughout the world of Orthodoxy, uh, we also uh, proclaim a victory. For the cross, my beloved, which we venerate on this day, and which we lift up as a symbol, not of defeat. For our Lord's death on the cross was not a loss, but the gain, a victory. A victory over sin, a victory over death. And indeed, our Lord's passion is a type of marathon, for he suffered. Uh, for us and for our salvation and endured a uh, great trial and tribulation. And we, my beloved, in, in imitation of Christ, are called to follow him, to pick up our cross. Every time we baptize a child, the godparents offer a cross, and the priest blesses the cross, saying, whoever wishes to follow me, let him deny himself and pick up his cross and come after me. We are midway through Lent, and if you are following the fast to the best of your ability, then you may be feeling a bit of fatigue, or a bit of a struggle. And so the Church, my beloved, offers the veneration of the cross, as you see decorated here in front of you today, by beautiful flowers, which at the conclusion of the liturgy we hand out to everyone, and I encourage our Sunday school teachers who will be leaving uh, prior to uh, the distribution at the end to come back after Sunday school and we'll have flowers for you and the, the children. And so my beloved, the church offers us this beautiful flower midway through Lent as a reminder to us that the cross is not a defeat but a victory. The flowers represent the Holy Resurrection, for without the Resurrection, the cross has no meaning for us as Christians. But it was through the Resurrection of Christ that the victory was pronounced, that Christ crossed that finish line. And we have, we, uh, through this period of time, need encouragement to continue the fast, not to give up halfway through. I was listening to the uh, the radio on my way to church where there was a station that was covering uh, the marathon and they had something uh, quite wonderful for the runners at the 18th mile. Uh, I, I can't imagine walking 18 miles, let alone running 18 miles. But uh, they're, they're, how old is it, the marathon? 26? 26.6. 26.6. 26.2 miles. So 18 miles, you're, you're like two-thirds of the way through. And, and all of the cheerleaders from all the high schools of, of Los Angeles gather there to cheer on the runners. To cheer them on. And so the church, my beloved, is your cheerleader today. To cheer you on, to say, continue the fast. Don't give up. Work through this struggle, for there's something glorious at the end, the resurrection, and that's what that flower is for. That's the symbol you carry home uh, today, my beloved. A friend of mine came for, he comes every year, a childhood friend. We grew up together in the neighborhood in, in Cleveland and had all kinds of neighborhood games together. He comes out every year for the the LA Marathon, and we meet and we talk. We're talking about fatherhood and our philosophy of fatherhood, for he has children and I have children with the same age. And we talk about how, for us, it's very important as fathers to do the very best, to work the hardest and to sacrifice for our family, for our wife, for our children. And that, that struggle is not one that uh, is a burden. It, it's a joy, although it may be difficult. It's something that we pick up, that we embrace. Now, there are many movies about uh, Christ and his passion. Uh, some I can watch year after year after year. 
like Franco Zeparelli's uh, Jesus of Nazareth. I can watch that year after year after year. Some I, I can only watch once and I can't watch them again. Uh, uh, the Passion of the Christ by, uh, who was that? Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. I, I can only watch that once. It was much too graphic for me. But in that movie, the one thing that sticks in my mind is how he pictured Christ embracing the cross with courage and strength. That's the one thing I carry from that film. That our Lord was not afraid to walk that walk of Golgotha, of the Via della Rosa. That was his marathon, my beloved. He embraced it with strength and with courage. In Egypt, the Coptic Orthodox tattooed the cross often on their hands. And in Ethiopia, uh, the Ethiopian Christians often tattoo the cross on their forehead. Now that takes a lot of courage when you're surrounded by uh, those who would persecute you for the cross of Christ. And in our culture today, I see many young people who have uh, the cross uh, tattooed on their body, showing their faith in Christ. And we as Orthodox Christians, a Greek tradition to wear the cross, isn't it? All of us are receiving a cross at our baptism. It's a beautiful tradition. Our priests wear a cross. It's not a piece of jewelry or decoration. It's a proclamation of faith. And we wear it with love. For our Lord loved us so much to carry his cross and to embrace uh, the struggle. And so we are called, my beloved, he tell, tells us in today's gospel, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Each and every one of us have to embrace our struggle and follow Christ's example of self-sacrifice and self-denial for a greater cause. Whatever that cause may be, God presents you with it. Whatever struggles you're facing, whether they be financial, or emotional, or physical, or spiritual, or in your family, whatever cross you are bearing, whatever suffering you are going through, embrace it, receive it, there's a purpose for it, embrace it with courage, pick it up and follow Christ through his passion to his glorious resurrection. For he will, my beloved, not give you more of a cross than you can carry, nor any burden greater than he knows that with faith you can overcome. That is the promise of the gospel, my beloved. That is the good news that I share with you today. May our Lord Jesus Christ grant each and every one of us the courage and the strength to pick up our cross and follow him with dignity and always in the spirit of love.